welcome back to the ring. I'm the Heckler. This week, we end our four-week NFL preview with the AFC and NFC West. So here we go, starting from number four. In fourth place, to really no fault of their own, and this week they almost beat the Jets. I thought they were going to beat the Jets, but they didn't. They almost beat them. The Raiders are going to finish in fourth place. They're going to finish 6-10 and ten overall. I think about 2-4 and four in the division. It's not that the Raiders are bad, it's just everyone else is a little bit better. And I mean, after all, they're the Raiders, they're going to get more penalties in the end. They're just going to finish fourth. Sorry, Raider fans. Better than 2-14 and 14, though, right? Just above them finishing third, it's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. I know, Chiefs fans, you sit, you're like, what? What's going on? Last year was an aberration. You had Alex Smith. You didn't really pass the ball to Dwayne Bow. Your defense saved you in a lot of games. You're finishing third. Not going to be that bad of a record. Probably 8-8, eight 7-9. Eight, I'm thinking 7-9. Probably in the division, 3-3. Three and three, But you're finishing third because the two teams ahead of you that are just that much better. Now, finishing just ahead of the Chiefs, finishing 9-7 and 4-2 and and in the division, San Diego Chargers. They're going to finish second, possibly fight for a wild card. I'm not even sure, but they're finishing second. I think they start early this year and they kind of fade late. I know that's really weird saying the Chargers, but they usually they don't start really well and they fade late. But I think this is they flip the script. They're going to come out like a house on fire. They're going to start off maybe 4-1, four 4-2, and four and whatever it is, and then the season's going to catch up to them. So 9-7. and seven, Four and two, second place. Now, winning the division, to no one's surprise, Denver Broncos. They're not going to be the dominant force they were last year, even though the offense is going to be really good. They're probably going to finish about 12 and four, maybe five and one in the division. They might lose one game to Kansas City, maybe in Kansas City. But, you know, Peyton Manning, one year older. He is, he is what he is, but he's still one year older. Uh, the receiving core, they're going to be solid. It's just going to really come down to can Monty Ball really be a number one back? I don't know if he really is. He's a legit back in fantasy, but I don't know if he's really number one back in the NFL. I guess we'll see as the season progresses. But the AFC West shouldn't be a problem for Denver as they're going to claim probably a number one or two seed in the AFC. Well, that does it for the AFC West standings. If you don't agree with me, eh, whatever. Next is going to be the individual player awards. So for the coach of the division, it literally comes down to Denver's John Fox and Mike McCoy of San Diego. And I mean, all things being equal, if San Diego is going to make that run to 9-7, and seven, possibly a playoff spot, then I give the nod to Mike McCoy, just based on his talent versus John Fox, because Mike McCoy doesn't have Peyton Manning. No offense to Phil Rivers, but that's why he basically gets my coach of the division. Now, having said that, I really do think the MVP of this division is going to be Phil Rivers of the, of the Chargers. Phil Rivers, I mean, he has... What's the right word for it? Suffered through a lot of his career. Because, I mean, he's a big leader with no followers. This year, though, he has a lot of followers, and he's still a leader. So, in the end, if they do make the playoffs, even if, even if they don't, 9-7 is good enough for me for Phil Rivers to be MVP of this division. The newcomer of the division in the AFC West has to be Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, how lucky can a guy get? He leaves Pittsburgh and Ben Roethlisberger, who's kind of a scrambler. He's kind of a big, loafy guy. He has a good arm, but he's no Peyton Manning. He basically gets to replace Eric Decker. And, I mean, Eric Decker, he might have a good career in the Jets uniform, but you're leaving Peyton Manning. What were you thinking? Anyway, that's the newcomer of the division. All right, Raider fans, we're getting to you now. But the rookie of the division is going to be Derek Carr. I know, you guys are, you guys are cheering. I give you a thumbs up, because Matt Schaub... He's garbage. And you guys already know that, so I mean, obviously you're excited. But Derek Carr, he's going to be better than David Carr because your offensive line actually exists, and he won't get sacked 70 plus times. So, rookie of the division, Derek Carr. Now on to the no-brainer part of the individual awards. The offensive player of the year is going to be... Yeah, yeah, you guessed it. Peyton Manning. No real explanation needed. It's Peyton Manning. The defensive player of the division is an oldie but goodie. He resides in San Diego. It's Dwight Franey. He's going to remind the Colts just how effective he used to be on the edge for them, but he's going to be out west, you know, in the sun, by the beach. It's not going to be boring in Indianapolis. I mean, they're going to have a good year, but he's going to help San Diego to a really, really good memorable season. Like I said, 9-7. Good start. Hopefully playoffs. Anyway, Dwight Franey, defensive MVP. 
So yeah, that does it for the AFC portion of this preview. Coming up next, the NFC West.